Uf, mi gente, we Mexicans know how to swear. Most of the times we swear on your mother or we compare you with animals or just like in English, we mention certain body parts. However, you as a non-native speaker, well, you have to be careful because you might think that you're just, you know, like teasing someone, but they get very insulted and then look at you like, ¿Qué? ¿Qué dijiste? ¿Qué dijiste sobre mi mamá? A ver, repítemelo, a ver si muy salsa. To make sure that this doesn't happen to you, in this video I will show you 10 harmless Spanish swear words. These are the Mexican equivalents of words like darn it, darn it, darn it. Yeah, you know what I mean. Words or euphemisms that we use when we don't want to say the actual bad word that we're thinking. Let me show you when and how to use them through a story that almost ended up violently that involves a forgetful roommate, an angry garbage man, and a big misunderstanding. It all started when you decided to do your spring cleaning and you ended up with 300 million trash bags. So there you were with your millions of bags of trash and then you go complain about it to your roommate. Ay, tengo un montón de basura que sacar. Uy, ¿no oíste? Acaba de pasar el de la basura ahorita. Chirriones. So we say chirriones, but we want to say chinga or ching madre. A Mexican interjection to express anger and or disappointment. Talk bad. You're determined to take the trash out today. So you carry your own 300 bags of garbage plus all the other garbage that you could found around the house and you reach for the garbage truck. ¿Alcanzaste el camión de la basura? Abuelita que lo alcancé. Abuelita. Abuelita. This word actually translates as granny, but when we use it, we want to say something like, of course. And the real expression, it alludes to an egg. <laughs> yeah, like you say, ad egg. Wait, did I say ad egg? Yeah, ad egg. But yeah, we don't say it because it sounds very vulgar. So instead we say abuelita. Now, your friend looks a bit weird. They're looking anxious and they seem like they're looking for something. Oye, ¿has visto una bolsa de Ikea? ¿Dónde? Estaba por ahí, estaba cerca de la puerta. Ay, creo que me la llevé con la basura. No manches, es que estaba ahí mi ropa del gimnasio y una bocinita. No manches. Literally, don't stain, but we use this expression to mean like, no way, yeah, something like that. We could also use no manches to express disappointment or surprise or disbelief. Let's elaborate. Ay, no manches, perdón, no me di cuenta. ¿Qué mensa soy? Es que estaba justo al lado de la demás basura. Ay, no manches, mi bocinita. ¿Crees que esté muy lejos el camión? Está estacionado como a cuatro cuadras. Córrele, ándale, vamos a ver si todavía están. Acuérdate que abren las bolsas y capaz que sí vieron tu bocinita. Did you hear? I call myself mensa. Yeah, Mensa is actually an acronym for an association that groups people with very high IQ. Yeah, but in Mexico, Mensa or for a woman and Mensa for a man, it just means dumb. And yeah, unfortunately in Mexico City, separating garbage, you know, like organic, non-organic and stuff like that, it's still not the norm. So the people that collect the trash, they do it themselves. They actually open the bags and separate the garbage. So you and your friend run. You run faster than you've ever run in your entire life. Run, Forrest, run. So you're running and then you spot the garbage truck and you see it, is that it? Behold, you spot the big, fat, yellow, Ikea bag. It's still there. But wait, it's being opened. The guy has it. You see the bag grabbing something out of the Ikea bag. Could that be? And then you go like, no, oiga, no, eso es mío. Es mío. The trash man looks at you de los pies a la cabeza. 
then you compose yourself and explain. Disculpe, disculpe, es que por tonta se me fue una bolsa con ropa deportiva y una bocinita a la basura. Es, es esa bolsa que acaba de abrir. No, no había nada. No, no, en serio, le... Mire, le juro que sí había, si yo lo acabo de ver. Uy, no, señorita. Pues mire, si quiere, búsquele, pero ya está todo bien pinche revuelto. No creo que vaya a encontrar nada. Oiga, pero yo creo que vi que usted... No, señorita, ya fue. Mejor olvídelo. Por tonta. Because I'm stupid. Yeah. And also pay attention to that pinche revuelto. Yeah, when the guy said, ya está todo bien pinche revuelto. If you look the word pinche in a Spanish dictionary, you might find that it means kitchen helper. But we use it more like darn, darn. Yeah, like pinches políticos, pinche gobierno, pinches impuestos, pinche chamaco. All right. So, you know better than picking up a fight with this man. I mean, you do have some street credit, but not nearly as much as he does. So left without any other choice, you sadly capitulate. You are super sorry, you apologize profusely to your friend who fight away so the whole thing unfolding from a safe distance. And, well, you know, he's very disappointed because of you, he lost his stuff. Perdón, perdón, te juro que para nada me di cuenta, lo siento mucho. Ay, no, no, no te preocupes, no fue tu culpa. En todo caso fue culpa de ese hijo de la tostada del de la basura que agarró la cocinita y no nos la quiso devolver. Did you catch that? Hijo de la tostada. And in case you were wondering, this is a tostada. We say hijo de la tostada instead of saying the actual bad word. But wait, you weren't that far away from the garbage truck and I think they heard you. Uh oh, the guy actually did hear you. He's coming, he doesn't look very friendly now. All of a sudden, the man approaches you. You don't know what to do, your friend doesn't know what to do and all of a sudden, vertebras. The garbage guy just pushed your friend violently and you have no idea what to do. The other guys from the garbage truck, they're coming trying to escalate things when all of a sudden... Everyone is looking, trying to see where the music is coming from. Wait, it's coming from your friend's car. Could that be... La bocinita! It was always there. Ya vio, señorita, dígale a su amigo que tenga más cuidado. Ya casi le parto su mandarín en gajos y todo por no fijarse. Let's hear again. Vertebras. And you have to pronounce it really elongating that ver part. We use this word or other words that start with ver instead of saying the actual word that refers to a certain part of the male anatomy. Ojo, in Mexico, people will know what you're trying to say. It would be the PG-13 version of the actual bad word, but people, you know, will still know and it's still a bit loaded. So use this vertebras or verde. <laughs> Use it at your own risk, yeah. Use it at your own risk if you're, you know, like hanging out with your Mexican friends and you want them to be like, what? How do you know that insider's piece of knowledge? And now for what the guy said, let's examine closely. Remember he said, casi le partí su mandarina en gajos. Yeah, I almost cut his mandarin in pieces or in segments, yeah. Well, we use this expression to cut someone's mandarins in pieces instead of saying the actual thing that it's something about doing something to someone's mother. <sighs> so, woof. well done. We narrowly avoided a fight right there. Come here. But what if the tables were torn and someone was actually insulting you? Then you have to now watch the following video because there I will teach you four different ways to ask that rude person to shut up in Espanol. We start friendly and nice, but we will, you know, get stronger if they decide not to shh, shush it with the insults. Find me in that video by clicking the image on the screen. There, there, yeah, there, right there. See you there. This was Paulissima y fue un placer estar con ustedes. Hasta la próxima.